Our third awardee is former Japanese ambassador to the United States, Ryozo Kato. Uh, it's the third time I'm sitting on a panel with him, which goes to show you that he's been to the U.S.-Japan Council uh, meetings three times in our five-year career. We really uh, uh, appreciate his dedication. But uh, as the video plays, waiting on the on-deck circle all this time is Professor Dan Okimoto, Professor Emeritus at Stanford. Uh, Dan also chairs our U.S.-Japan Council's Board of Counselors. Now, Dan's a perfect person to give this award because, like Ambassador Kato, Dan is an expert on the political economy, especially the political economy of Japan. But also, like the Ambassador, Dan is very passionate about sports, especially baseball. <laughs> and many of you know, may not know this, but Dan had a hand in getting Daisuke Matsuzaka over to the, to the Boston Red Sox back then, that dice came. And so with that, uh, Dan, after the video, I'm gonna toss uh, the ball over to you, one Dodgers fan to another. <laughs> well, let's first watch the video. You see, the presence of the United States in the Pacific has been the cornerstone of the stability of the entire region. Asia is not Europe. There's no NATO, no EU, nothing. And under that kind of circumstances, the presence of the United States has been the key, the cornerstone of stability. will be thrown out by the ambassador of Japan to the United States. Let's have a warm round of applause for Ambassador Ryozo Kato. Success, extraordinary success, is paradoxically uh, harder to cope with than failure. I call this the pathology of success because with success often comes the virus of power, wealth, fame. And that virus metastasizes and takes possession of the human body, the heart, and the soul. Fortunately, all three recipients have not fallen victim to this pathology of success. The symptoms of this pathology are an inflated ego, distorted perspective, a diminution of values, character, and integrity. Ambassador Ryozo Kato is an example of the authenticity of success, not the pathology of success. He has been described by his colleagues as one of Japan's greatest diplomats and state statesmen of the past century. He has served four times in Washington and as ambassador traveled to 48 of the 50 states where he met and mingled with tens of thousands of Americans. He served in a time of 
difficulty, turmoil, trade tensions, Japan bashing, a war in the Middle East, terrorism, and thanks to his steady hand, U.S.-Japan relations weathered the storm and came out stronger than ever. I once asked him, what was the most fulfilling aspect of your ambassadorship? His answer was, getting to know the American people. This is an indication of the love and respect that he has for America and the American people. Now, one of the reasons, one of the secrets for Ambassador Kato's success, lifelong success, is his wife, Hanayo, who is fully deserving as a co-recipient of this award. All three recipients have that same asset and the same commitment uh, to their families. But in the interest of full disclosure, let me point out that Ambassador Kato is not totally free of pathologies. One addiction that he has been unable to kick and which has grown worse over time <laughs> is his lifelong love affair for baseball. <laughs> you saw that in the video. There is no bigger fan uh, or more informed fan of baseball than Ambassador Kato. I once asked him, who was the most Amer impressive American that you ever met? I thought for sure he would say President Reagan or President Bill Clinton. No, his answer was Hank Aaron. <laughs> you saw Hank Aaron with Ambassador Kato in the video. You've got to love a man who has the honesty and the taste to pick out Hank Aaron. <laughs> I want to point out also that Ambassador Kato has provided strong support for the United States-Japan Council. And uh, he was one of the first um, uh, people in Japan to spread the gospel of the USJC. And the first time that I heard about the USJC was through Ambassador Kato. In a recent arresting article that Timothy Egan wrote in the New York Times, about Ernest Hemingway, he posed the paradox of success. How could the greatest writer of the 20th century be such an awful man? I would like to pose the authenticity of success in the following way. How can one of the greatest statesmen and diplomats of the past century be such a, a man of such modesty, warmth, and decency? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Ambassador Kato. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much, Professor Okimoto, for your too kind introduction. I feel so honored and privileged to receive this award, along with great Governor George Ariyoshi and great Professor Paul Terasaki. As for USJC, I cannot make my remarks without saying a few words about the late, great Japanese-American and Senate leader, Daniel K. Inoue. I miss him. My first contact with Senator Inoue was when he called me, a brand new ambassador to the United States. Shortly after my arrival in Washington, D.C. in 2001, in the aftermath of 9-11, when my secretary told me that Senator Inoue was on the line, I thought his secretary was at the other end. However, it was the senator himself. In my surprise and excitement, 
I jumped up from my chair, <laughs> stood upright, <laughs> and started blubbering. How are you, Senator? <laughs> this is a new ambassador from Japan. And my name is Kato, spelled K-A-T-O, <laughs> with accent nowhere. <laughs> Just flat intonation, Kato. <laughs> there are seconds of dead silence <laughs> at, the end, at the end of the phone. Probably, Senator was thinking, oh my, I have to break in another one. <laughs> Senator Inoue was such a monumental figure in the U.S.-Japan relationship from World War II and over the next uh, 60 years that I immediately decided to consult and share with him all things of relevance and import, import between the United States and Japan. And as time went on, friendship and trust grew between us. I felt he was something of an uncle and a mentor to me. His demeanor was such that many of you people prob probably felt that same bond. Senator Inoue had a keen sense of appre apprehension that Japan's voice was not being effectively heard, especially compared to the significance of the US-Japan relationship. Thus, he became strongly convinced that we needed a new means to help carry Japan's voice to the ears and hearts of Americans. This, I think, is how USJC has started. The Japan-US relationship is very close to my heart, just as it was to Senator Inoue's. Some time ago, an interviewer in Texas asked me the question, which is more important to you, your wife or baseball? <laughs> Summoning all my diplomatic skills. <laughs> I said, I love my wife, but I have known baseball longer. I have a wonderful relationship, not only with my wife, Hanayo, not only with the great game of baseball, but also with the United States of America, which is not just a relationship for me, but a commitment and a dedication in my life. The first time I set, set foot on U.S. soil was September 1965 on my way to Washington, D.C. as a diplomatic trainee. I touched down in Hawaii and Los Angeles with an overnight stay in each because non-stop direct flight between Japan and the United States, continental United States, were not yet available. The America I found in New Haven and Washington, D.C. was shining, shining in all different aspects. Incidentally, between 1965 through summer 1969, I never saw a single Japanese car on the streets of New Haven and Washington, D.C. My second tour of duty in the United States was 18 years uh, later, in 1987, again in, again in Washington. This time, streets in D.C. were filled with Japanese automobiles and Japan bashing as a well-known phrase. The third time I was in, posted in Washington was from shortly after 9-11 to the end of May 2008. Fortunately, during this period, the Japan-US alliance was at its peak. For reasons I don't have the time to go into, I'm optimistic our peak can become our base. But in this context, I wish to applaud the USJC under the strong leadership of President Hirano. To cite just one 
illustrious instance, as many do, the Tomodachi Initiative, mobilized by USJC Irene Hirano, has been an absolutely resounding success. Let me close with one last thought. When I was an ambassador, I noticed the tendency of Americans of various backgrounds to proudly connect the heritage they left behind with their American identity. So there were Irish Americans and African Americans and so forth. And I liked and admired all of them. But you will allow me a certain partiality if I say I had a special place in my heart for Japanese Americans. To me, Japanese Americans are like those cherry trees around the Tidal Basin in Washington. Their heritage is Japanese. Their home is American. Combining the best of both, they flower in beauty and constancy, year after year. What Japanese Americans mean to the United States, in my view, is similar to what Japanese, Japan should mean to the rest of the world. So, I hope you will understand how very meaningful it is for me to receive this award from you today. Thank you very, very much. Congratulations again, Ambassador Kato, and thank you, Dan Okimoto. And uh, by the way, great pitch from that mound. Wow, got it over the plate. And uh, now I know what Dan Okimoto says when he's talking about how he's such a skilled, supreme diplomat, that quest to the answer to that interviewer about his wife and love and baseball. Wow, that's, I'm not going to come. I'm not going to go there. But uh, anyway, maybe one of these days, Ambassador, I love baseball too, but we could see, I was talking to a, a baseball writer who was saying, wouldn't it be great if we had an old timers game of American all-stars who played in Japan like Cecil Fielder going up against Japanese all-stars who once played in the US like Hideo Nomo. And you could open that day um, on a Sakura Matsuri Cherry Blossom Day in Washington to start the, uh, the baseball season. And I'm sure if we're ever able to see that, you can throw out the first pitch again. <laughs> and if you don't, I know some people would really love to do it. A man named Mr. Ijima from Mitsui and Company today. <laughs> And if not that, Mitsubishi's arch rival, Mitsubishi, in this form, Mitsubishi Bank, Masa Tanaka, our Masa Tanaka, not the Yankees' Masa Tanaka, he went through a 90 mile per hour fastball at the opening of a San Diego Padres game when he tossed out the first pitch. Anyway, we're getting to the bottom of the ninth, and you're probably tired of my baseball analogy, so I'm going to stop there. Once again, let's give a big round of applause for today's award winners Dr. Paul Terasaki, Governor George Ariyoshi, and Ambassador Ryozo Kato.